your TAJ Sports with Jack Washer. Thought it was probably one of the more complete games um, that we have played in, in our six years. You win a lot of games when teams don't score and we score a lot. I mean, it's just down to basics. Okay, noted. You win more games when you score more points than the other team. Okay, got it. Just having some fun with you, Sean Clifford. And Penn State had nothing but fun last night. From start to finish, the Nittany Lions left no doubt, swatting away Maryland 59 to nothing. Game ended late last night, so let's get you some highlights. It was a sold out crowd at Capital One Field. The Nittany Lion just shaking his thing. Penn State had outscored Maryland 104 to 6 the last two times these teams had played. First quarter, Josh Jackson intercepted by Jan Johnson, setting Penn State up deep in Maryland territory on the ensuing play. Sean Clifford in for the touchdown to put Penn State up 7-0. Later in the first, Clifford finds K.J. Hamler and just watch K.J. go. Oh my God, he's like a human joystick, breaking ankles, even camera people ankles. In for the touchdown, 58 yards. Penn State up 14-0. Hey, look who it is. Trace McSorley back in the house. He plays at Baltimore, so it was a nice short drive for him. Second quarter now, Clifford to Nick Bowers, 15-yard score. Nittany Lions at this point dominating. It's 28-0. Finishing up the first half, Clifford with a little bloop to Journey Brown. And Brown will know if no one's going to tackle you, you might as well go in the end zone. Penn State led 38-0 at the half. Third quarter, Brown would add another touchdown to his resume to make it, get this, 45-0. Sean Clifford pulled. Will Levis comes in, and he would score two rushing touchdowns as Penn State, like I said, finishes off the Terps 59-0. Penn State has now outscored Maryland 163-6 to the last three games these two teams have played. Coach Franklin, talk to me. Young team and the maturation process is always is always challenging. Um, it's one thing to do it at home, and it's it's a different thing to do it on the road. But I actually think, and again, I, and I don't want to beat this kind of with a dead, you know, I don't, I don't want to beat this dead horse, but I really felt like the way we practiced with the boys, that our guys were so comfortable that I actually think the energy in the stadium they fed off it. You know, they fed off it. This game is a, a good stepping stone, but it's not even close to where I want to be. Um, you know, I, I still see a lot of uh, explosive plays that I left up on the board. You know, keep in mind, Clifford threw for almost 400 yards in two and a half quarters, so cheer up, Sean. Elsewhere in the Big Ten East, it was a nail-biter in East Lansing. Michigan State hosting Indiana Hoosiers down seven when Michael Penix goes to Watt Fillier for the 11-yard touchdown. That tied the game up at 31 a piece. The next drive, though, Brian Lewerke for Michigan State avoids the rush, fires downfield to Daryl Stewart for a 44-yard gain. And that would set up Matt Coughlin from, tw from 21 yards with just under 10 seconds to go. That gave Michigan State the 34-31 lead, and Sparty holds on to beat Indiana by that exact same score. Over on the North Shore, the Pitt Panthers taking on Delaware. D Delaware, one of the best teams in the FCS, and the Blue Hens gave Pitt all they can handle. Gene Coleman and Nolan Henderson tying the game up at seven. Then Jordan Townsend goes to Henderson for his second touchdown of the day as Delaware goes in front 14-10. But Pitt pulls it off in the end. Taysir Mack hauls in a 12-yard touchdown pass from Nick Patty in for the injured Kenny Pickett as Pitt squeaks by Delaware 17-14 the final. St. Francis traveling to Bryant. The Red Flash were trailing 6-3 late in the first half when SFU blocks a punt, and that would lead to an SFU score. A two-yard touchdown run from quarterback Jason Brown. SFU led 16-6 to at the half, and that's really all the scoring they would need because the defense was dominant. Terrell Smith, Dwayne Majors, they team up right here on a quarterback sack. The SFU defense only allowed 210 total yards, three yards per play. Incredible as they t win this one over Bryant by a score of 16 to six. In high school football, Bishop Guilfoyle and Penn Cambria's game tonight was suspended due to weather. The game will resume tomorrow evening 
at Mansion Park at 7:30. BG currently leads Penn Cambria 8 to nothing in the second quarter. Claysburg Kimmel hosting Mount Union on homecoming. First quarter, Mount Union capitalizing on a fumble snap. Davon Wilson taking it himself for the 7 nothing Mount Union lead. Penalties were a big problem for Claysburg in the first half. The Trojans capitalized in the second quarter as Wilson finds Blake Woodward over the middle for the, four, for the score. That made it, excuse me, 14-0. Trojans, just before the half, Claysburg driving. Corey Chamberlain goes left and back right. And finally lets it go downfield. It's tipped, but falls in right of the hands of Joseph Noah for the score. A lightning delay would delay this game as well. Right before the half, sending both teams into the locker room. This game also suspended and will resume Monday evening at 6 p.m. Okay, we were able to get in some football this afternoon. Richland and Westmont Hilltop squaring off at Price Field. Richland up 7 0. Second quarter, Kellen Stahl to Jordan Four, and he just bowls over the defender into the end zone. 14 0 Rams. Third quarter, Jacob Sable takes it off left tackle, plunges for the goal line, and he is in for six. That made it 21 0 Richland. Saul would add another touchdown through the air. This one goes to Griffin LaRue as Richland stays undefeated with a 42-6 win. Finally, we wrap it up with Portage traveling to Ferndale. Mustangs already up 13-0 in the first quarter. Gabe Force weaving his way through traffic, and he's in for the score. Ref, get out of the way. Get, get, get out of the way. Portage goes up 20-0. Ensuing Ferndale drive, Caden Clark for Portage comes up with the pick. As Portage is in business once again, then it's force again, this time barely breaking the plane, but it still counts for six points. Portage wins going away 54 to 19, the final. We'll be right back.